So, I, I wanted to talk a bit about exceptional handling, exception handling today. So, let us just uh, go back to some of Madhavan's circle of examples. Um, let us just try to define a function which computes the, we give a point in um, rectangular coordinates and let us try to just compute its, um, I guess I need to, uh, its, its polar, its angle, its argument. So, math import star I hope that will take care of most things. And so, it, it should take um, um, x and y and return uh, uh, a tan y by x right. So, so far so good. So, let us just get into the python interpreter and run this. oops l 1 dot pi ok. So, now I have this um, theta and I can try to do something like this 1 comma 1 and that is pi by 4 I guess right. So, so this works, but suppose I do theta 1 comma 0 I get 0 if I do theta 0 comma 1 I should get pi by 2, but it gives um, 0 division error. So, this uh, 0 division error is an example of an exception and uh, there is ways to handle these things and uh, what you can do is uh, you can say ok, uh, you try to do this and if something goes wrong then do something else. So, the syntax for that is you say try this. So, you try to return a tan y by x and if except when something goes wrong and the thing which goes wrong is shown here it is it is this uh, 0 division error. So, you just write that down except uh, 0 division error. We will see that these errors are actually classes. So, um, they are they are objects and so the the uh, convention is to uh, use camel case that is upper case for each word in the thing and then they are just joined together. And what should we do if we have this 0 division error? Well, I guess we should return pi by 2 right. Let us try that and see if it works. So, let us see what happens. So, now we will again so, um, beautiful. So, now it works as if you do you do not see the formula behind it just gives you the right answer without any worries right. So, you were asking if you do not try to accept uh, it does not do anything I mean let us see what happens. So, suppose you just uh, remove these. It uh, it expects something there. Okay, so, th so this is good um, and you can also use this for uh, handling other um, um, weird kinds of input that people may inadvertently put. So, somebody may try um, you know um, uh, somebody may try to say um, theta 0 comma a where um, a is a string. So, it does not make sense. So, um, <coughs> python automatically sort of puts this as a type error, but you may want a different message. So, you could say um, you could add a line here except type error and then you could print a custom message surely you are joking. Mr. Feynman. 
then now python knows <coughs> so python knows okay so if you put uh, 0 comma 1 it gives you pi by 2 so it is taken care of that uh, division by 0 error but if you put 0 comma 8 puts whatever message you wanted to see and it does not show the error message and it actually uh, goes on I mean there is no the thing is not stopped if you had more lines after that you could uh, execute them as well so it is not broken. So it is um, this, this kind of thing is used often for managing uh, uh, strange things. Now, 0 division error there is a there is a whole hierarchy of um, errors um, let us see Oh um, yeah, so so if you look at the documentation, there's um, there's a whole hierarchy of things. Just like they are all classes actually. So if you look at this, uh, there's something called base exception, and everything derives from it. We'll see how you can define your own exceptions uh, later. But um, there is a keyboard interrupt, generator exit. Then there are uh, these things called exceptions. In exceptions, there is stop iteration. This we will see when we talk about iterators. And then there is a class called standard error. And from this, most of the things that we end up here is our division, zero division error. This derives from arithmetic error. So, every zero division error is automatically an arithmetic error, but not the other way around. So, here we could also have said um, in our file we could have said arithmetic error. If we were not sure exactly what kind of error would occur or we wanted to catch more things and this would more or less I guess this program would uh, for the set of inputs that we have defined here it would have the same kind of behavior. So, so it still takes 0 comma 1 then it catches that 0 division error uh, as an arithmetic error. Okay. And, uh, you could try further changing this to standard error and now what do you think will happen? So, if I type this what will happen? It will still give pi by 2 and if I type this will it say surely you are joking Mr. Feynman? It will still give pi by 2. So, because both type error and um, uh, arithmetic uh, div zero division error are um, deriving from standard error. So, they are both standard errors. So, you need to find the right level of um, error to uh, give. So, so this is not good enough here you really want it, um, zero division error is the best thing to have because also if something unexpected happens you want to know. So, maybe you know the arithmetic error came because of something else. <coughs> okay, so that is um, that is um, uh, so base error pretty much everything is caught. Yeah. And then so if you just want to suppress error messages you could just say except base error. Oh, let us let us try that. Okay, so um, base exception. Base exception. I have not tried that. So, this should catch everything is it. Yeah, it looks <coughs> like uh, it catches everything. So, if you just left the except uh, thing blank then it would just not do except base exception colon. And you have to say continue otherwise it will probably give you an pass. pass. Okay. So, let us see what happens then. nothing happens. This will also be the case if you type 0 comma 1. Okay, so, let us change that back I is not really what I want. So, except 0 division <coughs> error. Okay, I am still not very happy with this code because if I say um, theta of 0 comma 0 what should it say? 
Well, it says pi by 2 because that's the case that it catches, right? So, then there are a couple of ways to uh, deal with this. One, uh, one kind of error is value error. This is where um, the, the input is of the correct type. So, it is not a string or something, it is still x and y are um, you know in this case they are integers, but you can treat them as floats. Um, but 0, 0 is not a good value for those variables. So, you could uh, do that. Uh, I mean you have a lot of choice here, you are the programmer. So, um, so, um, so you could include um, here before this. Um, if x equals 0 and y equals 0 raise value error. So, here um, the code you are writing will uh, generate the error of a certain kind and then you can use that in subsequent code that you write and you can even give a message. So, you could say for example, uh, origin does not have a well defined argument. I do not know maybe we should make this. It yeah. leaves a message. And like yeah. So, it leaves a message. A Let us see how it behaves. So, so now it says value error and give some additional message which will help you debug your problem. Okay, and so for so one way you could use this is um, you now let's say we are going to write another program which will this could have been part of um, one of Madhavan's classes. So value error is one of the things in the hierarchy. Yeah, so let's look at where it is. It's uh, it's under uh, so. Oops. So let's go down. Here it is. So it's in the standard error, and under value error there are uh, Unicode error, Unicode decode error, Unicode encode error, Unicode translate error. And so, so those are special, but most most for, for us of course these are not the issues that we are looking at. Also, when you do theta of one comma a string. Yeah. There also you get a value error. Yeah. It could not say it could not. Uh, no, that is a type error. Oh, 1 comma some string. Oh. Well, well, here it says surely you are joking Mr. Fine. It says that because we caught a type error. Oh. If you remove this, it will just say type error. Oops. Don't want this. It says type error. So that's different from value error because it's not that the value of x is wrong, the type itself is wrong. So that's much worse than just having right. Yeah. So value error means that the type is correct, but somehow it's not what the program expected or the person who wrote the program expected. You can you can use these uh, accept statements to distinguish between the different types of error that show up. Yeah, you have to give the name of an error and then colon and then a list of instructions to follow so if that happens. These are like conditional statements. This is like an elif, if you wish. Well, it is not really because try is. So, try is like um, if this generates an error, but at the same time it does this. So, it is it is like two things at one time, it is doing something and it is checking if it generates an error. So, it is very easy to work with. Um, so, you do not have to you know before you do something you do not have to check if it will generate an error and then write code again to do it. You are doing both at the same time. Is that clear? 
So now you can use this um, you can use this um, value error that uh, I am raising here in, in some other code that you write. So for example, I may want to implement a function called polar coordinates. Okay, and here I would say um, um, try return and then you first thing you want to return is the r, so it is square root of x squared. Remember that in python you need to put star star um, plus y squared and then you want to return theta of x comma y except value error. And then you could return, you could do whatever, I mean you could return 0, 0 if you do not want the code to break or you could return a uh, uh, value error again. But let us say I do not want the code to stop working, I will just make a choice, I will decide that you know if it is um, 0, 0 then r of course is still 0, but I will just say theta is 0. So, return 0 comma 0. So, let us do that. So, now this um, now this will uh, uh, you know polar quads. So, if you take 1 comma 1 it correctly shows root 2 and pi by 4 and if you take uh, 1 comma 0 it uh, correctly shows 1 and 0. If you take 0 comma 1 it correctly should show 1 and pi by 2 and getting to the point if you take 0 comma 0 it gives 0 0. But somebody may miss I mean this is a bit tricky do you really want to think of this as 0 0 or do you really want to think as of it the second part as everything like you know you may have some condition saying if the argument of this point matches the argument of that point to check if two points are on the same ray you may want this guy's argument to be all angles. Right, So, it is better to maybe warn the user that something funny is going on here without really breaking the code. So, it will still run, but you want to issue a warning. So, there is something there are things called warnings. So, you can say um, import warnings um, warnings are also here you can see and uh, this is a bit more complicated, um, uh, I will not go into, I mean I, I am not really able to explain the full, uh, this thing may be on a later date. And then you could add something like um, before you return 0, 0, you give a warning. So, it works like this, you type warnings dot warn polar coordinates of the origin are ambiguous or something like that and then return 0, 0. So, it will it will um, so now if you type polar coordinate 0, 0 it returns 0, 0 and it issues a warning. Okay, now, let us uh, let us try to use this uh, function to make a third function. I will call this. So, we will convert something to polar coordinates and convert it back to rectangular coordinates. So, let us call it uh, def uh, rectangular coordinates and here the inputs will be r and theta and what should we return? We should return r times um, cos theta and r times sin theta. Um, so, let us just test this.
so we could take for example r to be um, zero this is a of course uh, oops something is wrong with my rectangular ports I thought it's defined maybe I didn't save it oh something wrong oh yeah 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 okay so anyway when in doubt cut and paste there you go so it gives uh, this is a stupid one but you could do something like this and it uh, gives you um, so there's this is floating point error of course right this is e to the minus 17 so it's almost 0 um, and this is 1 this is looks like it's working fine and now we can define this um, I don't know if you have ever tried uh, translating from English to French and back to English using Google Translate. So, let us do that in Python. So, let us now define a function called circular or whatever um, yes circular and this will take x comma y convert it to polar and then convert it back to rectangular let us say and then we will see what happens with this warning. So, I should say rectangular words of polar words this is work let us see um, or do I need to put a star in front of it. So, um, let us say circular 1 comma 1. Okay, so, it says rectangular quads takes exactly two arguments, but only one is given here uh, I am giving rectangular quads the argument polar quads. So, that is just at one tuple. So, I need to unpack that tuple and that is done by putting a star in the beginning. So, what is happening is this polar quads yeah this of 1 comma 1 it is a tuple. Okay, so, I do not want it to be a tuple, I want it to be unpacked as two things, uh, you cannot quite do that. Okay, so, so, but it works here. Okay, so, let us just, um, this is a useful trick, I mean, yeah, and this works fine and a little bit like Google translate you do not exactly get what you put in here in this case it is because of floating point errors, but it shows that our code works. Okay, and now what happens what do you expect if I do um, 1 comma 0, 0 comma 1. Okay, so, these are working fine what do you expect will happen if I type 0 comma 0. So, remember when I type 0 comma 0 um, what am I doing here I am taking uh, polar coordinates. So, I will be taking polar coordinates, but if I have 0 comma 0 then uh, this try statement will return a value error right and this value error is uh, uh, going to because because here x equals 0 and y equals 0 says raise value error and that value is going to trigger off this warning but it's still going to return 0 comma 0 so let's see what will happen okay so it, so let's try circular 0 comma 0 and uh, somehow that warning is no longer um, shown okay so it's doing something uh, where the programmer had actually wanted to show a warning, but the warning is not shown. So, you can think of this as a feature or as something to be careful of it is a bit of both. So, so you do not want warnings to keep showing up when people are using several layers over your code, but you can actually control that to some extent. So, um, I think um, 
yeah the value error message is suppressed already because of the uh, error handling here. So, um, um, because you say accept value error and then we make it a warning. So, if there is a value error it does not stop it just gives a warning and returns 0 comma 0. Yeah. Then it, it raised a value error. And yeah, so, so that now was called here um, theta of x y. So it raised an error, but it did not print the error message. Because of this except value error. So it tried this because the error happened. It went to this thing and it executed these two lines. So, so this is the whole point of um, raising an error and then catching it. So, now that program did not stop right here when the error was raised, but it continued. So, the message is only displayed when the program stops at that point. No, the program does not stop at this point. So, if you say polar quad 0 0, so you could say x equals r comma theta no, equals sorry, no, polar quads. Yes, uh, for the message to display, it requires the program to stop at that point essentially. No. So, look at this. So, so if I do this, um, so if it stops then r and theta will not get any values right. Oops, what happened? Um, I did not even get the warning in this case right. So, it has not stopped and now if you check look at what r and theta are, oops r is 0 theta is 0. So, it is actually run and if I did it without that um, whoops what happened? Oh, because theta is now uh, 0, so I should be a bit careful here. No, no, it is giving an error because I am um, reusing, uh, but it should not, right? Because I thought. Um, yeah, I mean, this theta, the error is probably because it is trying to. So, here theta is um, 0 and if you ask what is the type of theta, it says it is an integer and here it says call theta. So, I need to redefine theta again. I have overwritten theta which was a function. So, I should run that exec file again and then my theta will be ok and so let us go back to polar ones. Um, what happened to my warning? So, this gives the value error. I, I do not know what happened to my warning here. So, that works fine. I was expecting a warning here, but uh, for some reason it is not showing up. Uh, let me just uh, I am not sure what is happened maybe let us just restart this. So, this gives a warning right oh maybe it gives it only once. Okay, so, we need to look a bit more into, uh, but here is something else I figured out. So, so you could also say uh, stack level equals 2. So, so let me just uh, do this again. So, if I execute this again, then it shows the warning. Okay, so, let us um, so, there is there's a there is a there is something the way that it handles the warnings. Okay, so, so, it is it's restarting it again. So, 
So now let us, so if I do this, uh, if I if I refresh everything and I do polar quad 0 0, um, oh, so it is not doing it anymore, um, let us let's just restart it. Yeah. Now, I have changed the, uh, so, so let us just keep this as 1 and now let me run circular 0 comma 0, okay. um, maybe I am not very sure about what is going on here. So, um, so there is this optional argument called stack level and uh, I guess the homework is to look it up and figure out exactly what it does. <laughs> Yeah, that may be a good point, but better to exit right and then. So, we need to work a bit more on this the way the warnings are handled. So, I look at this, there is also something called width which is used for this. So, um, so this, this is a slightly more uh, complicated thing. So, what should I say? I should say um, circular 0 comma 0, yeah, it still gives the warning. Okay, so, uh, I thought it was something else. Anyway, so, um, okay, and uh, you can actually define your own errors. So, suppose you want to say, okay, uh, you want to be able to distinguish later on whether the zero division error was caused by um, some other zero division or because of uh, this polar coordinates not having you know that zero zero was um, given to polar coordinates. So you can define your own uh, error type. So um, so you could define, for example, uh, it's a, it's just a class. So it, you could say class let us call it origin error and um, well you need to figure out which error it lives under I, I would say this is a value error and you, this is the good news is that these are very easy to define that is it. So, so you just need to say where it derives from um, I do not know what else you can do here but uh, this this is good enough for our purposes and now you could uh, for example you could raise such an error so you could say fussy polar so we already had something called polar which pretty much just um, returned the polar coordinates and if you had given the origin it uh, issued a warning and then let you go right so when you could have a more uh, sort of uh, fussy one which does not allow that to happen and raises an error which then can be caught by some you know next level of functions or whatever that you are using. So, so you could say try um, return um, you know you could do the same thing square root of x squared plus y squared theta x y except oh I should uh, put this probably except and now I could say origin error no um, so this theta will raise a um, value error except value error. So, if I give the origin here theta will raise a value error and then I could say raise origin error and then you could put a message or you need not put a message. Let us just try leaving it without a message. I am wondering if I have to put this. So, let us try fussy polar 
and so if I put 1 comma 0 or something it is that 0 comma 1 it is fine and so what does it do with 0 comma 0 it raises an origin error and now I can use that in a subsequent program to know what kind of div 0 division error was there. So, you can build your own hierarchy of errors based on what is already inbuilt in python. Okay, so, um, so for now that is about all I wanted to say about uh, exception handling, uh, are there any questions anything you would like to try out? Hmm? It is ok, ok. So, um, so the documentation is here, um, so there is a, there's a built in exceptions, these, these are the built in exceptions the ones in this tree and um, there is a description of each of them. Okay, so, they say base exception is not meant to be directly inherited, for that you should use exception. So, you, so you see here there is something interesting, uh, these are um, system exit keyboard interrupt engine, these are not things you should be uh, using. So, this is really you know you should not be deriving from base exception, you should be deriving from exception <coughs> because most of your programming issues will not involve uh, these things. So, it could involve generator exit we will see, we will we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. Huh? Yeah, so I think uh, what I did was I, I just typed python exception hierarchy probably if you type python exceptions that is good enough. So, that is um, you know errors and exceptions built in exceptions there is couple of things. There are even tutorials and things like that. Okay, so, that is about try and accept and raise those are the main commands that we used. Okay, so, so let us Okay, I wanted to also talk a little bit about um, um, iterators and iterables. So, um, so there are uh, in Python there are things that you can loop over. So, for example, you could say for x in range three. print x, say so prints 0, 1 and 2. So, x in and then this thing range 3, well what is range 3? Well, it is actually it is actually just a list, ok. So, it has got these three things. Um, there is another thing you can do, you could say for x in x range 3 print x and it does the same thing. If you ask what is x range 3? Um, it is not a list, it is something else, but it has a function called list I think. You can get a list out of it and that is exactly the same. So, what is this x range 3 and how is it different from range 3? So, you can also loop over it and looping over it is functionally the same as looping over the list 0, 1, 2, but the point is x range 3 does not generate the list it uh, at, at, at the beginning, it gives you one by one the values and it is an example of um, it is an example of an iterator. So, um, you can make your own uh, iterators too, but, but let me just go over some other uh, uh, some other uh, iterables. So, strings are also iterable. So, you could say for x in um, 0, 1, 2. print x, what do you think will happen? Exactly the same thing, uh, well at least it looks the same. <laughs> um, there is other stuff you can do, so um, I have here a file called um, data file and it has three lines, ok, hello, darkness and my old friend. So, um, you could um, iterate over the lines in a file, this is very useful when you are reading files. 
So sometimes you store your data in a file and often you would like this file to be human readable as well as computer readable. There are ways to store python objects themselves but that is not human readable. Um, but there is also ways to you know you can read text files. So, so here is a file it is a text file it is called data file dot txt and it has got 3 lines and I could iterate over these files. So, for uh, x in and now there is this command called open. So, this uh, open takes a string as input and that is a file name. So, um, this file is in the same directory where from which I am running python. So, I do not need to give the complete path and um, if I say open this thing this actually open the, the function open it takes as input a string and returns well it returns a file but you can it is an iterable. So, if I say again print x it is it is going to do 3 things it is going to so let us look at this file again it has 3 lines hello darkness and my old friend. So, it will print these one by one. You could just say f is equal to open data file dot txt. So, what is f? f is an open file in mode. So, that is the default mode read mode r you could also say mode equals w if you want to write into the file, but this is an iterable. So, these are some examples of iterables and uh, let us just uh, see what happens if I say nothing happened this time. Why? It is already read to the end of the file and there is nothing left. So, this thing is exhausted whereas, if I had done for x in um, 0, 1, 2 print x it does that and again if I do it well of course um, I am sorry I should not do it like this let us say l equals 0, 1, 2 and or or, or let us even say l equals range 3 ok and let us say for x in l print x it does that let us do it again it does that again. Now, let us look at l equals x range 3 it is printed and now let us do it again oh it is printed it again ok. So, so x range also renews itself but uh, for this file thing it did not renew itself ok. Um, ok, so, so you can create your own uh, iterators you do, so this is usually in the case where you do not want to generate the entire list over which you are iterating at first say the list generation itself may take a lot of time and you want to start getting your results before the entire list is generated. So, you could use it for that or you could use it in a case where the stuff that you create itself occupies a lot of memory. So, or there is a lot of stuff that you are creating. So, then you do not want to create all of them and store them uh, you just want to create one use it and then go on to the next one. So, so that is that is the way it is done. So, so this is done by um, something similar. So, you could you could uh, they are called generators and you could create generators. So, I have um, I have prepared uh, some things uh, already here. So, um, let us ignore the first line for now. So, um, so here is a simple uh, thing. So, for i in range 10 sum equals sum plus i I start with sum equals 0 I have something called partial sums which is initialized with the empty list. So, what this is going to do is it is going to take this range 10 which is a list 0 to 9 and it is going to just return another list which is the partial sums of the original list ok. 
So, this is just a simple uh, naive implementation which does not use um, um, right. So, what is this called? It is called L1 iterators dot pi. So, if I um, now type partial sums, I have as expected the partial sums of this sequence, right. Okay, so, now we can do this with uh, iterators and here is uh, another function. Um, this function actually does not return a list. So, um, this, is, this is what is called a generator and you notice here that instead of return it has something called yield. Okay, so, let us see what this does. So, partial sum oops sum 8 of 10. Oh, nothing much happened, but it printed generator object. Okay, but what I can do is I can loop over this for x in partial sum 8 10 print and it is printed them one by one. So, what this is doing is it is um, one by one it is generating these things. Okay, th this has some additional features. So, I could say um, i equals, okay. so this i is a generator object. It is an iterable as we have seen, we were able to um, iterate over, uh, we were able to loop over it. We could say for x and i print x, it would be exactly the same as what we did here but it also has a method called next. So, next well it is to start with it is initialized at the you know it is nothing has been used. Now, what is next to that and what is after that. So, this is exactly what is happening when you are looping over it, it is calling next and then it is applying whatever you are doing to that. And so, you can keep doing it till it runs out and then it generates an exception and if you go back to the documentation on python exceptions. There is something called stop iteration here it is right on top right. So, that is what happens and you can catch that. So, you can say okay. Um, you know our uh, uh, iterable ran out of things and uh, okay and uh, you can actually um, define your own um, so this generator is one way to um, create uh, iterables which are not lists which which you know generate things one at a time um, but you can also do it uh, using a class. So, if you do it using a class you have to implement this next business and let us just try to do an example here. Um, so, um, actually um, as with uh, um, Sanjeev Kapoor right the cook. So, he will say that you know you want to make tandoori chicken you do this this and this he says but I have already prepared it and then he shows you the thing. So, I have already prepared the tandoori chicken here up to step n minus 1 and we will just do step n. So, so here is something which is a class which will return an iterable. So, so it is called class partial sums and uh, its input its its init is where it gets constructed. So, here you have got self comma element. So, when you construct this thing you should uh, give it something called uh, elements and uh, it is got an attribute 
dot else uh, is just this and uh, it has got couple of things initialized. Now, it has got two methods one is the iter which does not do anything it just says return self and the other is the next and this is the important point. So, let us just go through what this next does. Um, so, so firstly this says that uh, if this index which we initialize to be 0 is equal to the length of the list of elements that you are going to input. So, here it should be um, you know you, you need to put in doc strings actually to say what these things expect and so we will go into that in another class ok doc strings, but here it is expected that this elements is going to be a list and if you reach the end of the list you raise the stop iteration uh, exception. Otherwise what do you do? You, you have this thing called self dot sum which was initialized to be 0, you add to it the current element of your list ok. So, self dot element self dot index. So, this is index is keeping track of the position where you were and then you increase your index by 1 and you return the sum so far. Is it clear what this class is doing? So, this class has just it has the init of course, but it also has this one non trivial method namely next. So, it implements the next for the iterable that this will uh, this class is. So, so I could say um, you know i equals um, so this is a class so it is camel case partial sums and now I need to give it a list. So, not 10 if I give it 10 uh, well no error has happened that is interesting. So, um, yeah. Ah, int has no len. So, so it is running the init only after you call it for the first time. Um, so, what I should do is I could put range 10 if I want. And this runs through the thing. It does not at any point create the entire list. It returns them one by one. And then when it is done it we asked it to raise the stop iteration and so it does that. And uh, you can uh, also um, so next is a reserved uh, word in yeah it is a reserved method. So, you, so you could also say um, for x in partial sums range 10 print and it does that and it automatically stops when um, stop iteration is raised ok. So, that is also taken care of. So, this huh? the for takes care of it. So, that is python has sort of designed to take care of that. So, the loops they when you do for over one of these iterables when the stop iteration happens it automatically stops iteration. So, instead of raising an error. So, you can use it like that and it also has an attribute called list. So, if I say i equals partial sums range 10 um, I could say list i and returns the list. And uh, I think uh, Yeah, yeah, because it has a method called iter. So, for Python, an iterable is something which has a method called iter. You could try to do something weird, like you could take this and comment this region. So, I am now removing this next method. Okay, so what if we just try to fool Python into thinking this is an iterable? It has an iter method, right? too lazy to type. <laughs> okay, now I will say this and now I will say oops it has no next method. So, it complains 
right. So, you better have a next method if you have an iter and you try to do anything itery with it. I mean if you try to iterate over it of course, it would not check if it has an iter method or not unless you try to iterate over it ok. So, it becomes an iterable if it has an iter method, um, but you know it does not check if it is an iterable or not until you try to iterate over it. So, it did not complain when I said i equals partial sums range 10, you would have a whole bunch of other methods as well. So, so this is a very useful thing. So, in sage for example, partitions are iterable you can say um, for uh, let us just pull up a sage window here, um, do I have it? No, ok. So, I was sticking to pure python there because I think it is it is good to sort of know the distinction between these two things especially when you are developing python because then you are actually writing python code not sage code. So, you need to import all the sage functions that you have. Um, we could do that right. So, so this uh, partitions of 10 is actually an iterable. So, let us say p equals partitions of takes no time because it is not actually generated a list right and you could do whoops. So, it is slightly different here this is not python it has a method called first. Yeah. So, Oops, maybe we should be less ambitious. Um, it, it actually this is a bit different, so that is why it is what is it doing here? It is actually um, listing them all out and then it is going to count that the compute the length of that list. So, this takes a while, but there is also this beautiful thing called what is it called partition no num number of partitions this is pretty good obviously not yeah so ramanujan actually came up with this formula which has been improved a bit quite a bit and that is implemented here. So, so yeah, you see the, the sage has a lot of differences from python too, but you can iterate over partitions of n it is an iterable, but then the way next and there is also something called prev. No, it should work uh, you can say next um, yeah. So, I think uh, I am not sure. So, so here is something you can do for example. So, here is my partition and la dot next gives me the next partition in uh, lex reverse lex or lex whatever yeah false that means there are no more you reach the last one. That one of my favorite homework problems while teaching partitions is to ask people to write the code for next and that is going to be your homework problem. So, uh, just in pure python create a iterator for partitions of n by implementing next yes, fun fun little exercise. I mean it is not just coding it is a little bit of mathematics involved. And there is also something called prev in this case. Oops, no, I thought there was. 
what's la okay la dot no uh, ah I thought there used to be something called prep so you can see all the methods here oh there's no previous or prev no not there okay but I think for permutations maybe that is what I am thinking. So, W equals permutation you can give 3, 2, 1 maybe 2, 1, 3. Okay, so for W in permutations of 10, um, well, okay, so now let us let us try this, try w dot next dot prev equals w in fact print this except what is the error for the last one it will give me an error Uh, it should be called stop iteration I think I hope this works I did not try this out before and what what is the thing um, continue or uh, no what is it called pass yeah should not be saying false right. So, this was my code ok. So, this is another homework problem what what happened here? Let us try a simple example. Right? So, what happened here? Ah, okay, so that is another homework problem. So, you have two homework problems one is what happened here, and what was the other one? Partitions, yeah, do it in Python. <coughs> 